Great. Well, um, thank you very much, Michael, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm delighted to be here today and to welcome such a large group for discussion on this very important topic, meaningfully engaging patients and families in their health care. On behalf of the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation, I want to express my sincere thanks to Michael McGinnis and the tireless staff of the Institute of Medicine for all of their hard work in developing this terrific agenda that we have here. And I especially want to thank Christine Bechtel and members of the Planning Committee um, for all of their work. Finally, my appreciation to today's presenters for sharing your work with us here. Now, before we delve into the specifics of how we advance the engagement of patients and families in creating a healthcare system that produces better outcomes and better value, I'd like to spend just a few moments sharing a personal story with you. And I'd like to think that this story captures some of the spirit of why we're all here and working so hard to transform healthcare. Some of you know me as a researcher, and I've been interested in shared decision making for over a decade. And in recent years, I've concentrated my work on trying to implement shared decision making and routine care. And later today, Grace Lynn will present work that she and I led together. But there's also a very personal side to this research. And it's a large part of why I was drawn to this issue in the first place. Just before I turned 17, I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. That was a diagnosis that was life-changing. But I was fortunate enough to be diagnosed in a hospital where, after I was stabilized on an insulin regimen, I went through a training program that lasted five full days that taught me everything that I needed to know to be able to manage the condition, to understand what it did, and what I needed to do every day to be able to avoid the complications that can result from diabetes. Now, I wasn't a model patient right away, and it took me about six years until I woke up one day and really realized that all of my care was really in my hands, and that my ability to avoid the complications that can result from diabetes depended on what I did every day. And so I test my blood sugar an average of eight times a day, and I always know the trajectory of that blood sugar and where it's going. In the language of medicine, I practice tight control, and I've been doing that for almost 20 years. Now, the benefit of all this is that so far, knock wood, um, I've been able to avoid complications. And every year, I go to see an ophthalmologist for an annual exam to determine whether or not I have any traces of retinopathy. And every year as that appointment approaches, I'm a little bit nervous because I expect that maybe this will be the year where the first shoe drops and there's some initial traces of retinopathy that indicate that something may need to be done. And three years ago, when I went for this exam, the physician made a very interesting statement. So first she spent a few, several silent minutes conducting the exam, and then she stopped and said, everything looks clear, no trace of retinopathy. And I said, phew, okay, what I'm doing is still working. But then she said this, you must be really good at following orders. And I was taken aback a bit. Her remark was, in my view, really both inaccurate and inappropriate. Inaccurate because I don't do the things to manage my condition because somebody else tells me to do them. I do them for me. And it was inappropriate because imagine if she had said this to someone who didn't know as much about managing the condition or didn't feel as confident about managing it as I did. As a psychologist, I can say that hers was a comment that undermines patients' sense of that they can do what they need to do to stay healthy. And it really sort of gets in the way of meaningfully engaging them in their own care. I tell you this story because I think it illustrates what we mean by changing the paradigm of healthcare delivery. The place where we want to get is one where the patient is a true partner with healthcare professionals. In fact, the most important team member, not someone who simply follows and obeys orders. Most patients don't want to follow orders any more than doctors do. And we need to change the culture of healthcare and put the tools in place to make engaging patients the way we all work, because it's the right and the respectful thing to do. It was this vision of a healthcare system where patients and families are truly at the center that drew me to the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation. Our goal in the Foundation's new patient care program is bold. We want to eliminate all preventable harm and eliminate unnecessary costs. 
and we include among preventable harms the loss of dignity and respect that many patients experience when they encounter the healthcare delivery system. We see a clear path to how this goal can be achieved. We need to meaningfully engage patients and families in a redesigned system that is supportive of patients and families, a system that optimally integrates medical and information technology, interdisciplinary teams, evidence-based practices, and continual learning, a system that considers patients and families as integral partners and embraces their engagement in all aspects of healthcare. We know, you know, that this goal is extraordinarily ambitious. But we all know that for patients, families, and ourselves, it is the right thing to do and we must strive for nothing less. We hope that you will join us in achieving this goal. So I look forward to an important and engaging discussion over the next two days. Again, thank you all for joining us. And now let's get to work with advancing patient and family engagement. Thank you.